I'd like to call this March 2nd uh, Council Work Session to order. Would everybody please stand? And let's remember uh, Lou Persichetti, who was a school board director, a coach for 40, 50 years. I know he's been down at Little Lake. 50 years. And uh, did a lot for the kids of this town. So let's remember him in our prayers. Please salute the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, please. Mr. Gerard. Mr. Devine. Here. Mr. Peza. I understand there's a death in the family. Mr. Peza. Uh, Ms. Cullen? Here. Here. Present. Mr. Petrucci? Present. Mr. DiGiuseppe? Here. Okay, there are a couple people I want to try to get in and out real quick. So, Chucky, I know you want to get back on the street. So, if you want to go to the podium. How you doing? Um, Chuck Palmer, you guys all know me. I live in town and I work in town. I just up here real quick because I got to get back to work. Uh, a couple of years ago, I did Fisher to Cop, the PBA. We had a great event. Um, we had a lot of help from town <clears throat> and from the council. Uh, we're looking to do it again in May. Um, looks like May 23rd. Uh, I was just up here to see if you guys would again offer to let us use the borough property over there by the lagoon. And last time, you guys offered to cover us under your insurance. So. That's what I'm here asking. If you guys would do that again, it would be great. If you need copies of any of the paperwork again, if you forget what it's about, I can drop them off next meeting. I just didn't bring anything up. Anybody's against it. No, it was a wonderful program. Excellent program. You guys are all welcome to come. You know, come out and check it out if you want. You know the date, Chucky, so we don't schedule anything here. May 23rd. May 23rd. I want to schedule a wedding there. Ah, okay. May 23rd. May 23rd. Need to be a, an agenda item or no? No. Okay. Thank you. Any questions for Chucky? Mm -hmm. Thanks, Chuck. Thank you. Thank you. Great program. <clears throat> so we have Stacy here from the Bristol Bar Little Lake. Go to the podium, please. Hello, everyone. Stacy Dragon, New Brook Street. Um, so I'm here today. We're in our final stages of registration. We have three days left. So Friday, uh, March 6th, from 6 to 8. Saturday, the 7th, from 10 to 1. And Sunday, the 8th, I'm sorry, Saturday, the 7th, Sunday, the 8th, from 12 to 3. Eligible right now, we have um, Little League International teamed up with T-Mobile. We don't ever try to get away. We will work out some way to get their fees paid. Um, our police department, the officers one year donated money for kids who couldn't play. We always find a way. We never turn a kid away, never. But this grant is giving them their registration fee if they qualify free. So if it's the junior boys at 125, they're sending us a check for 125. If it's 110 for the um, Middle grouping of children, they're sending us that. And if it's $60 for the additional or the T-ball and mini-ball players, they're sending us that. What is required is either a copy of their free lunch letter or their reduced lunch letter. Um, I believe if they have something proving that they get, is it SNAP, their yeah. um, food stamp card? Yep. I do not know what the eligibility is for financial. Mm -hmm. That was not given to me. We were just given the information on the program. So I don't know what the financial qualifications are that they would have to put in. Um, it is littleleague.org slash call dash up dash grant dash program. Please click apply and then apply again. Otherwise, it just sends me a free, you know, friendly little email telling me that your kid wants to play Little League. And then I have to email you back and say, hey, listen, go back and hit apply and apply. Um, we've had, at this point, 38 grants applied for, 33 have been approved, 
four are waiting for responses. They just did them on Sunday. And one got booted back because it didn't have the correct paperwork. Like she didn't send the correct portion of some sort of paperwork. Um, out of that entire grouping, <laughs> we were hoping this grant was going to bring us new players. We take kids from born in 2015 at four years old through age 16, league age 16. We were hoping this grant was going to bring out more Bristol kids, get us more players, because it was free to play. We keep hearing that our fees are high, and that's why kids aren't coming. Out of the 33 children that were approved, one. One is new. So parents, if you're out there and you're watching, please come out, sign up, file for this program, let your kid try the sport. They may not like it, they may love it, but if they don't come out and give it a shot, you won't know, and now you can do it for free through the program. So basically, I talked to Stacy a couple times on the phone regarding this program. And like she said, there's a lot of talk about kids can't afford it. Well, first of all, there were tickets that they could sell that would the parents could sell to make up for the, the fee, which uh, it wouldn't have cost them anything anyway. We give every parent that signs up. So when you pay your $110 fee, you get 55 $2 raffle tickets. Okay, we no. give them as a courtesy. If the parents sell those tickets at $2 a piece, that's their $110 back. They keep that cash, turn those raffle tickets into us. We pay the cash donation to the person when we pull the raffles at opening day. So everyone gets a chance to earn it back. But we have a lot of stay-at-home moms or parents that don't work and don't have the opportunity to sell those tickets. So we, like I said, we always find a way to make it work. We don't turn kids away. We find so a way. So Matt is texting me and, and telling me that you gave him the link, and he's posting that link on our TV right now. That's okay, great. So Thank you. So people at home can see how to do this. Thank so you. there's really no excuse right now for anybody to say they can't afford it or can't play Little League. No. And, okay. again, we have three more days left. Get them in. They were taking approximately four to eight hours to approve them. Um, the ones from Sunday still have not come through, so I'm assuming as leagues are finding out, because we were one of the first ones in this area, but as leagues are finding out, I'm sure they're getting a little more inundated with applications. Um, two other things they need to know when they go in to apply. It'll ask them the start of the season. That is April 11th. Um, we welcome all of you sitting in here today to come join us at opening day. It's 11 a.m. Um, and the end of season is approximately June 20th. So they're going to ask those questions. Um, they will not pay for equipment, shoes, spikes, things like that. We do have a donation area. If your child needs spikes or baseball pants, we do have some of those things in the press box. Come see us. Um, what is opening day again? I'm April sorry. 11th at 11 a.m. Okay. okay. Anybody questions for Stacy? No, the only question I had was just what Ralph said, just about, uh, I think Mark, you put it up there with the, so I was yeah, trying to I write it, it down. I, I gave it to him when I came in, <laughs> when I came in today. All right. Stacy, thanks for all your Thank dedication you. and hard work. Have a great evening. Thanks, Stacy. Thank you. Okay, I think that's everybody. Mayor, have anything? Uh, yeah, just real quick. Um, number one, the... Um, Spent the day over at Snyder Gerardi along with um, Mrs. Cullen. Today was Dr. Seuss's birthday. And if you don't know, it was his 116th birthday. Wow. Um, and read across America. We got the opportunity to read to uh, a couple different classes today, which was a lot of fun. Kids had a lot of questions about what does a mayor do. I told them a lot. But uh, <laughs> also, last month I uh, brought up that the uh, AOC, the Academic and Oversight Committee, and Snyder Girardi, the school district, is sponsoring a career night that will be held at Snyder Girardi School on March 26 from 6.30 to 8.30. Uh, I believe they have over 100 vendors, companies that are going to be there at this point. It's an excellent opportunity for students to uh, come there. Some of these groups may be offering uh, jobs not only to students, but adults. But it, the idea is it's a career night for kids. Come out, bring your parents. Uh, again, it's March 26th from 6.30 to 8.30.
I don't want to take Herbie's thunder, but I know he's working very hard on his carbon monoxide alarm exchange program. I'll let him talk about that. But uh, he's, he's doing, we have a lot of um, CO alarms that come in, and a lot of the old ones are at their 10 year expiration date. So we need you to bring them in and we'll exchange them for it. I'll let him talk about more on that. And, oh, I know everybody is probably thinking about the uh, coronavirus. We hear we're getting all these feeds on TV and everybody's trying to create alarm. Uh, I think we need to have some concern. I just want to tell you that we've met fire chief, the police chief, EMA, council president, um, and a medical professional went over what we currently have in, in place uh, relative to these type of emergencies. And uh, we're waiting for, what is it, March, Merle? It's going to be a meeting with, at the county that, Mar that Merle will be attending uh, from a county's perspective what they're going to be doing down the road. But I think that uh, we basically have a good program in place. So that's it, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Uh, just before we get, I should have mentioned this in the beginning, we had an executive session this evening to discuss the issue with the five temporary part-time employees. Uh, as of today, we've been waiting, going back and forth with the union rep. As of today, the union has uh, put uh, Joanne Driscoll and Mr. Palmer said they are not part of the bargaining unit, which is great news because that means we save two jobs. So therefore, Joanne and the animal control officer, Mr. Palmer, can continue their position and no concerns of layoff. The sad part is, again, this council met an executive session and we are 100% united on this that the other three employees, it's sad to say, will go home on March 27th. So we have advised the manager to draft up a letter to send out tomorrow. They'll probably receive that if they're not watching the meeting on Wednesday or Thursday to let them know they are eligible to collect and uh, they will be, their last day here will be March 27th. Okay. Uh, Let's go to public participation. Anybody on this side of the room want to speak on anything? Anybody on this side of the room want to speak on anything? My name is Erica Cruz Devine. I'm on Mansion Street. Last May, we at the West Ward polls to support Tony Riccio, who, by the way, is a loss to this council. I was involved in an incident with a member of Station 51 who was there working for Mr. Gorman. This person used information she could have only obtained while at my father's home during an emergency call. Violating HIPAA, this person spewed health information and falsities out in public. On June 10th, I filed a complaint with Chief Herb Slack, her station chief and the borough fire chief, and I carbon copied Mayor Saxton. Chief Slack expressed to me that he took my concerns very seriously but did not schedule a meeting with me until three months after my initial complaint, citing summer vacation scheduling as the reason. During this time, I asked questions. Chief Slack was not able to confirm to me that this person whose firefighter uniform adorned the badge of a registered nurse was in fact a registered nurse. Also, the Bucks County detectives in Doylestown were not able to verify her credentials. Chief Slack was not able to tell me the last time she completed first aid or CPR, which I found disturbing. While I have a great amount of respect for first responders and the work they do, I do feel that the chief needs to have some accountability and to make sure that the people in his department are kept up to date and he is aware of their credentials before they are allowed to go through town and in this case mislead the people they are serving. After waiting three months, three months for a meeting, when I arrived, I was told I was not allowed to have my attorney nor my husband in the room. The panel was made up of Chief Slack and two of her colleagues. So in other words, this investigation was being done by her friends. There was no impartial party, no note taker, and I was given no advance warning that I was required to be alone. 
although I was the complaining party, much of the insults that day, like the one you killed your father-in-law, were directed to my husband, and he was not even allowed in the room to make a statement. So my reason for being here today is that while we're talk you guys have been talking about firehouse funding and changes and mergers, what I'm asking this mayor, Mayor Saxton, and the council is I'm asking you to consider maybe a new leadership and appoint a new fire chief because someone needs to be accountable. And most importantly, I think the people in the borough need to know that when they call 911 for help, that their personal information and that of their loved ones is not going to be used against them or their family members as shameful gossip or political fodder. And lastly, I just want to say shame on you to those council members who turned around and hired this vile human being. So that means Ralph, Betty, Lou, Greg, and Lorraine. And I wanted to mention that I received an, a tremendous outpouring of support from people, not just from the borough, but from surrounding townships, from police officers, EMS, strangers, people that reached out to me. They could not believe what happened here in this town. So this reflects poorly on our town, but now looking back, it's been almost a year and nothing has been done. So think about how this reflects on all of you sitting here. I appreciate your time. Thank you. Good job. Anybody else on this side of the room would like to speak? That ends public participation. Herbie, what do you got? Uh, just two One is the, uh, the fire companies are continuing to meet to discuss uh, possible consolidation and mergers. And one of the things that they're working on right now is to reach out to other fire companies throughout the state which have already gone through this process to find out um, what the, what the uh, the roadblocks were to, to moving ahead and, and making progress. The second thing is what the mayor started to mention is that the um, the CO alarms, especially the ones that the fire department we installed 2011, 2012, 2013, um, maybe they've beeped, maybe they haven't beeped, but they're, they've reached the end of their life. We do have um, plenty of CO alarms right now. We started the program this past week. Um, on the exchange program if and we posted the times on Tuesdays Thursdays and Saturday that people can come to the fire station at Wooden Market Streets bring your old CO alarm we'll exchange it and give you a new one that's got um, a 10-year battery in it so you don't have to worry about batteries at all and okay. so um, we've been working to get that up on the website for the borough and all and uh, I just I posted another one on Facebook today to add some additional dates um, to continue this program, and we'll continue it up until we've given them all out. Okay, thank you. Any questions for uh, Tony? Yeah, Herb, I, I've always looked at you as a fair, as a fair guy, right? Mm -hmm. Is, like, see my wife up there and having to hear that again, it, it, it's so frustrating to me that that, uh, that was allowed to happen under your watch. What is the process of how could somebody be able to wear a patch that says that she is a registered nurse and then be in your, your fire station? Isn't that something that you should be aware of? I'm going to, Tony. Thank you. Yes. You know we can't discuss this. Okay, are, so I'm not, I'm right, not I'm just gonna, asking why, why can't you discuss this? Do you, do you want to answer this question? Okay, he don't want to answer you. Okay, well. Who, Michael, what do you have? Um, <clears throat> I have a question. The the one the during the years that you were giving those out, you had um, the alarms. There were some alarm alarms for the hearing impaired that you made us aware of. Are they also available? We still have. I believe we have three three or four of those left. Great. Right. Thank you very much. Anything else for the fire chief? Thanks, Irving. Chief. Things must be better. Thank you. We'll share microphones. Well, we had that meeting with the Bridge Commission May, what, remember the date? Uh, weekend? I'll hook that for you. Merrill and I went to a meeting with the Burlington Bristol Bridge Commission in New Jersey State Police OEM and a bunch of other municipalities, Bristol, because that is going to be closed during uh, several days, and I believe it's the month of May. Hopefully Merrill has the date. We don't believe it's going to have significant impact uh, because the hours of operation should be mostly at night on weekends, so we're hoping for that. May 1st. May 1st. Thank you. Um, 
On the crime front, some people following the news, uh, Chuck's Barbecue Burglary in Annabella's, uh, subject was placed into custody. Uh, information that was developed in the borough uh, helped with that. On the training front, our officers are going through an annual firearms qualification, CPR, first aid, and blood borne pathogen training. We also, I don't know if the mayor touched on it in an executive session, it was a concern at the last meeting with the Godensia aspect of our responses and being a little bit overwhelming on our resources. Uh, we first reached out to Godensia, met uh, with their team over there. They were very responsive, and they have been going through actually a change in supervisory staff. Followed by that, we met with the personnel of Lower Bucks Hospital and Gardenzio, had everybody in the same room, the people from the emergency room, the people from Crisis, the mayor, myself. And uh, the most important thing is that the communication was open and they see our concerns and they realize how, how, what it taxes is on resources and we need to be taken out of that equation as much as possible. And they've been doing that for us, so we appreciate. Um, we did learn now one of the biggest challenges we have with that is that they don't have the ability what they do in that emergency room called dual diagnosis. A dual diagnosis basically means that you can be diagnosed as a substance abuse problem, but also at the same time a psychiatric emergency problem. Right now they're split, and that's where we're having the ping pong match going back and forth. So uh, <coughs> thanks to Councilman Catrochi also. Uh, I know he spearheaded a lot of the uh, poured some little gasoline on the fire over there to get us some attention, and we appreciate that. Um, also, myself and the school superintendent went to the Bucks County Intermediate Unit for a school safety symposium, uh, just on best practices. And what else are we? And just again on the substance abuse problem, so far this year, we are um, five Narcan saves by police officers. So we're still out there doing it, even though it's... Um, it's readily available to the public now. I think that's why we see a decline. I think Herb would agree with me. But our officers are still a front line and they're doing a good job at that and we appreciate their efforts. And other than that, uh, 100 motor vehicle stops, close to 1,000 calls this month. That's it. Any questions for the chief? Just a point of reference on the motor vehicle stops. Can you just, what does that cover? Motor vehicle stops covers everything from a uh, Stop sign violation, speeding violation, unregistered vehicle. It's either education enforcement. It doesn't actually mean that somebody actually got a ticket. It means that there's an actual patrolman stopped the vehicle. Thank school you. zones. We try to hit the school zones real hard. Any other questions for the chief? Yeah, I have a couple of questions. Uh, the first question, chief, is along the lines with the stop signs and the motor vehicle stops. From all the people in the borough, they all, you know, we all do. I mean, you've heard it a million times about speeding and stop signs or whatever. And I know it's a difficult thing to do, is to monitor without being able to use radar and things like that. But with the idea that you can't really put stop signs up everywhere, and not that they would, you know, adhere to the stop signs anyway all over town. But is there a way that we can control, like, to create, uh, like, a buzz around the area in the town that if you're going rolling past stop signs or you know speeding on you know on these side streets or even our, our main thoroughfares in town is that we can kind of uh, create a buzz so that like we can curtail some of this stuff. because I look at it in the sense of there are places like if I'm driving like my uncle used to live down in Delaware so, like, there's a part of Delaware, everyone knows, like, if you go down to Delaware, if you're going on this road, I forgot what the road was, and if you're not going 35 miles an hour, you're getting a ticket. And they just wait there, and that's what they do all day. And, like, I know in the past, I remember, like, there would be officers in their cars waiting at different stop signs. I don't see a lot of that. I don't see a lot of that when I'm coming into town or, you know, at different parts of the day. Is that something that we could kind of implement? Just so we could, you know, kind of create a buzz. Well, the buzz would be nice, but the amount of stop signs and the certain intersections. And the problem is, and I understand your point. So if we said we took uh, the uh, Bear Street Market stop sign, mm -hmm. and we if put an officer there 24/7, and you knew that you hit that stop sign, you're going to stop there. Mm -hmm. We have another what 200 stop signs in town. So our issue is economy of resources. Mm -hmm. We have two, maybe three officers on the road. I just went through the numbers that I gave you. So our amount of 
proactive traffic enforcement based on our being handcuffed by the state of Pennsylvania without radar is pretty much responsive. So what we do a lot of times, and I know there was a lot of Facebook traffic, I was told about this. We get calls. I get calls all the time. I was up in Harriman a couple weeks ago. We were over on 2nd Avenue that a couple weeks back and Jefferson Avenue. What I try to do with our supplemental people is I do give them details in that area. But I don't hit one at a time. I have to go where the call is that week. I do what I can with what I have. That's basically what I do. So we don't have the luxury of creating the other boroughs that have, maybe don't get a police call for a day or two. We're a very busy place. We do the best we can. What I do ask if anybody does have targeting situations, I know one of the areas we were actually on it tonight was Otter Street, looking at those stop signs by the ball field. We've been there in the past, but some people brought to our concerns tonight, and so we're going to go back there again. Appreciate it. The other question. Now, as the chief, do you have a process in place that makes sure, like when we hire officers, is there a way, like before we hire them and they're in our building and policing, that we're able to check their credentials before we put them out onto the street? We're obligated to do background checks. Okay. That's it. Thanks. Tony, while you're on, just keep going and go right into you. Okay. I have one more, too. How are we handling these big tractor trailers that are going down these small streets in the borough? I know I've witnessed, you know, five myself. We grab them when we can. We actually have, we're hiring an officer that actually has some specialty in the truck enforcement zone. Yeah. And we found, remember the last meeting we had, we hit him, or excuse me, we had him through the Pennsylvania Commission working with us. Yeah. And like the word gets out. So we're hitting it in Bristol Borough today, so then they're not going to go around to the township. Or if they're hitting it in the township, they go through Bristol Borough because they're on the radios and they get it out. So we're hoping that, you know, our plan is that this is a little bit more enforcement that we're doing besides just getting them off the beaten right, path, right. which we usually do because it's a lot of times it's just guys that are lost. Mm -hmm. uh, with the enforcement action, the word will get out a little higher, like you said, create a buzz. Yeah, yeah. So what, now is when we have those incidents, and I, and I feel bad to say because I know there are people trying to make a living, but, you know, they're, they're always trying to turn off the 13 and trying to, it's always, you know, something a lot of the times in my ward right. in there that those things are happening. And, like, what is, is there a fine that goes along with us so helping you, them get back on the road? Well, if we want to issue them a summons, we can't borrow a warning summons. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they do, and sometimes the attitude's everything. Right, but, right. You know, whatever. What we do is more than anything is we assist them getting out of there, okay. educate them. It's, it's never usually, it's never a multiple offender. Right. So, so we're going to have a time gig from some guy from you know, uh, Illinois. Yeah. Or no, I get Alabama. it. Okay. No, I get it. Um, thank you. Uh, Mr. Dillon, how did we make out with the baseball fields? I, I know I, did you ever get those pictures I sent you? <coughs> yes. Okay. You know how we're making out with the cleanup? I haven't been over there. Mr. Plensky was cleaning out his shed and all. And that's, mm -hmm. that's what the pictures were. And he did uh, finish the cleaning out of his shed, and everything's been uh, cleaned up. Okay. And then, did you see those? Those um, I don't. I wouldn't say the puddle because there's water, but the, there's divots that were behind that. The, the what we used to call the men's softball field, but the visitor side closer to that. Uh, yes. You know the storage area. Right. Is there a way that we could Build that up with some dirt or something so it doesn't pile up and make it, you know. Just yes, in that area, that okay. area should be no problem. Right. Just uh, let me get into the, I was going to talk about it later. Just so you know, the last couple of years we had RNS go out there mm -hmm. and they tried to grade the fields the best they can in the beginning of the year. Mm -hmm. Because before RNS, there was a landscaping company, and I don't want to give their name, but they were putting like seven, eight, truckloads of dirt down <clears throat> throughout the complex, which we didn't think was needed. So Steve went out, and for the last couple of years, he regrade these fields at no charge for the borough. So I met his guy out there again today for the simple reason that we have a lot of issues. And, uh, you know, they're not going to keep doing it for nothing. 
but he did say to me, instead of them, because they're so busy and they don't have the time, <clears throat> and he doesn't need the work, he recommended a company that uh, specifically deals with fields. Mm. They did the fields in Newtown, and they do maintenance, and they you know, do grading and side, all that kind of stuff. So if it doesn't rain tomorrow, I'm going to meet them out there. If it does rain tomorrow, I'm going to try to meet them out there on Wednesday. Okay. So it's a matter of where you want to take these fields, but they do need, look, they're old. Yeah. I mean, there's no question. And something needs, like the Little Lake field has about an 8 to 10 inch lip. So that ball, if it gets through the infield, is going to come flying up in the air. So if you cut it out now, try to sod it, uh, is the sod really going to take? But we're using them now in, into November with kickball and everything else that's yeah. going on. Well, and here's the thing about it. Like, this is not to complain and say, oh, this is that. Or, this is not to complain. But I, I believe that RNS, when they are out there and when they did go out there, we did pay them for that. No, we didn't. No, I, I remember seeing it. I'll look it up. I'm not 100% sure. it up because I know he did it for right. nothing. But I'll check. And, but here's the other thing, too, is what are we hiring – Mr. Plensky for if we have to go outside I mean as of now he doesn't have to cut the grass our borough workers do it the only thing he's responsible for really is the dirt and the cleanup around the place which is hardly ever done and if it's done it's done by borough workers so I just don't understand what what are we paying Mr. Plensky for well I disagree with you first of all he's there every day emptying trash cans he's not but go ahead I'm that's in my way I look he cleans the bathrooms and he drags the fields and lines the fields the high school has their people do the lining of the fields for their games which Leo used to do before right the I'm problem saying, is yeah. Leo's job does not bring in, him into October, November, December, January, February. He's been doing that for us, and I told him he's out of his mind. I would not do it. The borough should be taking care of the fields at the end of baseball season. That's not his job, and that's not what he's being paid for, but he's been doing it out of goodness of his heart. That's why I feel that when people feel the way you feel, he should not do it. It's like, not, I can't make him understand that. No, it's not. Here's the thing about it, Ralph. Not, and I don't mean to get. I don't an know argument. what you want him to do. What do you mean? What I want? I don't want him to do anything. I think that's something. If that's what we're paying other people to do, there's no reason to pay somebody to rake the field and line it because any other community in the area that I'm aware of, they have their coaches, dads, or volunteers do it. And it's been that way forever. And now what you're saying is that he only has to do it during baseball season. I had that argument with before where he's only there six months. He's really getting paid $2,000 a month for he's there. And you go, no, he's there for 10 months. This is he how is. much he's making. No, he's not. He does the so Who does the soccer okay, field? I'm just a, Ralph, I'm there every day. That's my ward. He's not there every day doing anything. Okay. If he was, there wouldn't be puddles. There wouldn't be trash strewn all over the place where... You know what I mean? It, like, I'm not there to bad mouth. I'm just saying, let's talk about what's real and what isn't. It, it, that's not what's what you're real saying. What's real is you want this guy to become a surveyor now and start dealing with grading of fields. That's not his job. His job is maintenance. His job is to go there, drag the fields, line the fields for Little League, and pick up the trash in the bathrooms. If, that's, okay. well, that's, if you're yeah. saying that we should put this back on Little League, Maybe that's something we should vote on and do. Okay. Well, let's even go a and step further. If the further, fields okay. aren't done right, then, you know. I mean, we're doing things for the school that we never did before. Should we give that up, too, that Leo's doing? All right. So let's go back I'm to. asking you a question. Oh, I don't, no. He, I don't believe that he's. I don't believe that what he's doing is worth $12,000 a year is what I'm That's saying. your opinion. But no, what I'm saying, I'm saying let's is, take your wait, wait, let me finish. I'll let you finish. So if that's the case where it's $12,000 a year and you don't think that he's a surveyor, he's the only thing he needs to be doing is lining the fields and raking the dirt, right? I'm sure that we, if we put that out to bid, I'm sure there's somebody in Bristol who would be excited to do that job for five or $6,000 a year and save us $6,000 a year that we could kick back into our recreation for the kids in the borough. Okay. 
That's your opinion. No, it is. It's, it's, a, it's something that makes common sense. Opinion. It's not my opinion. It's common well, sense. Well, why don't you get somebody to come here this week and let us know who's interested in doing it? Okay. So what? So you could say, well, we're, it doesn't matter because I, I'm giving Leo already got the job. Is that? No, I'm not going to waste somebody's time. If you're not going to be serious, we have a contract with Leo for exactly. Years. So then we'll wait till after the contract, and then you. And if I'm here, he'll get another four years. That's what I'm saying. It, it, so it does, don't waste people's time and act like you're going to do That's something what you're that you're doing not doing right now. So. No, I'm not. Waste All right, them. so we're moving on. So number four. All right, Elm and Chestnut Street. The I I would love to see. We're going to spend three million dollars of taxpayers' money when we're said and done over on Chestnut and Elm Street. That property is going to be demolished, and I believe that that area would be the perfect opportunity when you combine that area, Chestnut, Elm, and what's now the old tennis courts in that area that lead up to uh, the canal, would be a perfect place to have a central park for this town. Right now, the only thing that we have that everyone's focused on is Mill Street. And I get it. We want to have a nice business district and work on it. But there's nothing to bring anybody else to the other parts of town. That is dead smack in the middle. It's a perfect opportunity. And what you talked about, which I, I had to read because for some reason, I don't know why, the other members of council were invited when Ben Carson was brought into the borough to talk about this. I, again, I find that very very disheartening that you run for office, you're out there campaigning, you're working for the people you're doing, and you don't get invited when somebody of you know that magnitude comes in the borough to talk about redeveloping the borough. And the only thing that is going to stop us is our, what we can create. Our minds are the only things that are going to stop us, right? So like to me, if that's the case, that should be a beautiful central park with fields for kids to work, basketball courts, and it was just a picnic. I just picture that being such a great spot for the town. But here's the thing about it. What I'm so frustrated about it is we're not going to know anything that goes over there because the information stays with only a couple people. So if you could kind of let us know what are your plans, Mr. D. Giuseppe, before Elm Street and Chestnut Street? Well, first of all, the Ben Carson thing was invitation only, and it wasn't for council. Oh. So there was, I don't think anybody was there besides maybe Louie was there for council. No, you weren't even there, Louie. Louie was there. How, so what was the invitation? It was through Congressman Fitzpatrick's office. That okay. sent out an invitation. An invitation that, that your son and your brother-in-law would be invited, but not members of council. Does it was that for make business sense? people. Does that make any sense? Yeah. I was there. Okay. Michael Borman was there. Louis a business person. Oh. Dave's a business person. All I'm All saying, right. th this is what I'm talking about. That you're not even included in the process of what's going on in your own town yeah. that you're an elected official That's, for. Yeah, I feel bad. No, you don't have to feel bad. It's just it's just who you are. That's all. Okay. You know what I mean? And then you make excuses. So cars. what are your plans, Ralph, of that area? I would love to see exactly what you said, a park there. Okay. I think that would be outstanding. And if you can get us the money, I vote for it tonight. Well, I think that would be great. Well, we we need Ben Carson because Ben Carson. He's ben Carson's for no, HUD. That's not in the deal. Yeah, yeah, but it's different. It's different. Well, what, the, the meeting what I read in the paper, whatever it said, is your imagination is the only thing that would. That so that wasn't true. Ben Carson has nothing to do with parks. All right. Well, here's the thing about it. If you could pledge that you will give, and I have no problem. I mean, Gilmore was a very important part of the park that went over in Bristol Township, so I'm sure they're aware of things. And if and if you would, if you would tell me now that you're going to pledge your participation and your agreement to having a park there, mm -hmm. I'm willing to you know to go out and do whatever we have to. But I'm sure there are. are Grants available. Did Bristol Township get any grants over there? Or, you know? Yeah, yeah, small. Okay, so, I mean, if it's there, and if we really want to do it, Ralph, I understand that you're in charge, and I don't have a problem with it. If you well, I'm get, telling you I'm supporting you. That's what I'm saying, but... I think Bristol Township spent $11 million. $11 million? How much was it? I, I don't know. 
For which part? The whole thing. Which well, there's two parts. The one on Cedar or the one that just No, the new one that's by the municipal building. Six million. The building came from open space. All right. You so five million is bought. Okay. So we borrowed five million. Right. So if you want to do it, just let us know. Right? I do. I do want to do it. Okay. But we also put money into debt service to pay for it. All right. So you raise. Because we have a surplus. Right. So you come back with a plan, Tony, and you got my support. All right. I appreciate it. Let us know how much you want to borrow, how much. The payments, how we're going to pay for the loan. Right. We could, we raise taxes through debt service. All right, so, we'll, so whatever you want to do. Okay. So the first thing I guess is, do I have the ability to reach out to Kurt and come up with some type of conceptual yeah. plan of the area? It's going to be fun working it. with you, Kurt. They're on whatever it, whatever it costs, Kurt, just do it. Hmm. Um. You want a price from them first, or you want to yeah, just give them the okay? Well, I'll talk to them first, and then, you know, I'm sure you're not going to charge me to talk to them. No, hmm. I don't know. No. Why not? He might. And, uh, all right, and then I'll wait until you talk to the new business. These are going to be things that we describe before we go into our agenda meeting to vote on? Okay. Yes. That's all I have. Thanks. Dave. Okay, real quick, is Bill Runch expressing any interest in that? We talked to him several times. We think that would be also a great project because there's no impact on the school district. They talked about assistant living and then transitioning them into the nursing home. So, but again, I it could be recreation. I definitely will vote to go borrow six million if Mr. Devine wants to do that and. That would be tax revenue also. Not to raise taxes. To pay for it. No, no, I'm talking tax revenue from Mill Run. Yeah, tax revenue from Mill Run. Tony, anything else? Uh, actually, I'm glad you came back to me. This is for uh, Mr. Dillon. The one, the signage that we have for those trucks, those large trucks that are going down, you know, those smaller streets, there was an incident that happened on Spring Street on the uh, area by the baseball field recently that just happened with the wires that I reached out to you about. Is there a way that we can make that sign that's on the front of that street, it's slanted sideways so it's not facing forward? So you really, if you're coming from 13 past, you're not going to see the sign. So Mr. Uh, Winslow gave me a detailed email with pictures today. And okay. I forwarded to Mr. Waldron, so hopefully it'll be done sometime this week. Okay, and I want to thank you too for the other things that you got done, and you know, you had the one thing at the, uh, I don't know if you're responsible, but I'll give you credit for it, at the canal, it was, uh, you know, the, the one page that was there in the middle was redone, so it looks nice again. That's it. Dave, what do you got? Let's go uh, back to you. Uh, Mr. Dillon, I just got a pothole at uh, the end of 4th Avenue and Green Street. Could take care of that for me. I appreciate it. And also, uh, I've got uh, uh, some questions on the, on the earned income tax with our financial obligations that will be coming up. Uh, but uh, it's okay with you. I'll, I'll come over and see you personally on that. We could talk about it. That's all right. okay with you. That's all I got. Uh, there's just a couple things going on in March that I wanted our public to be aware of. Uh, one is uh, there's a trade show called the Idea Show out in Valley Forge on March 11th uh, from 8.30 till 4.30. And this, there's a lot of people in town that are involved in construction or project management to property management. So uh, this is free a free trade show if you pre-register online. Um, the high school has... Uh, on March 13th, 14th, and 15th, Little Shop of Horrors. And I'm being a little selfish here because my grandsons are in it. Also, Mr. Devine's daughter's in it. Uh, so we got put, together yesterday. I'm going to put a plug and in Officer for that. Officer Pete Faith's daughter uh, is the lead in the play. Yes. So, uh, and Mayor Saxon already mentioned the career night uh, on March 26th. And then raising the bar is. Um, Having the spirits and brews of Bristol Borough. This is a uh, at the Center for the Arts on April 1st. It's uh, 6 p.m. and then the panel discussion. It's going to be Dad's Hat, uh, Odd Logic, 
And um, there's two other uh, fellows moving be behind Mignoni's building and... Uh, like Hops and Hardware. And ho yes, Hops and Hardware and... Uh, Probably Naked Brewery. With yes, Naked Brewery. So this is, uh, is going to be April 1st. You can go online on Raising the Bar site. Um, it's going to be a center for the arts. And these have all been good... Uh, yeah, there are good projects going on in town, so that's all I have. Thank you. Michael? Um, yes, why uh, Mr. Cotrochi was on that also in March is the um, pub crawl that benefits uh, Lou Dobson. Um, it's a good cause, but it's also a way um, I had, I, it's one of my favorite days to get to meet lots of people in town from all over that you may not have seen on a daily basis. Um, and then once again, that the um, Bucks County sign that is there now that the nice weather is coming. A lot of people are asking, um, you know, is it okay to take photos with the class, of the, the children and classes and groups? Absolutely, it's encouraged. Uh, just being part of the board now on Visit Bucks, they are ecstatic once again of how Bristol, uh, the community, uh, <laughs> has gotten all the publicity on it and it's just a fun thing to do so now that the weather's coming out uh, go out do that and post the picture it's fun and I'm going to suggest that all of council <clears throat> when we have the time to go there and have that done as well that's it Thank you. Mr. Dillon I brought up a couple months ago um, I was walking with my grandson the other day. The puddle by the courthouse. It's a large puddle of water every time it rains, and it takes days for it to saturate into the ground. And I, I really don't know how we can take care of that, but I know it. the other day it was there for at least three days. And my concern is that the kids cross from Otter towards the courthouse, and then they have to cross that spot right there to go to school. <coughs> And the puddle is not a little puddle. It's a big puddle. I have pictures of it. So I don't know if George can go down there and check it out. Next All right, we'll time take another we'll look at it. Okay, I'll send you the pictures that I have. Um, another thing is that a couple of months ago we had someone, I believe he lives on Bath Street, but it regards the Howe Street parking. And I would like to visit that site this week, tomorrow if possible. Um, but if not, this week, to see if we can change that yellow line, that large yellow line that we put there, taking away parking spots. I think we can minimize that. I would like to see it minimized, at least half of it. Because no matter what, I mean, I know we're worried about the trucks turning in there, as we are worried about trucks all over town, but they're, they're going to go over the sidewalk no matter what. And I just, I need to gain some of those parking spots back. So that... I would like you to look into and Ralph and me and you and George to meet up. I would appreciate it. And last, um, when we have new construction, and I'm asking because people are asking me and I want them to hear it from you guys. When we have new construction in Bristol, who does the inspections? For building? Yeah, like when you, buy, when you build four new houses. BIU. BIU, okay. So it's not the borough. So the problem I'm having is, and I'll be, I'll send you where it's at and which ones they are, and I'm not going to, you know, say it on TV, but there's an area where houses were built and they pass inspections, but yet they're having a lot of problems in those homes. When they call the builder, the builder blames the inspections company. When they call, one of them has to do with a heater, when they blame the heater company, the heater company guy says, well, that's why you get inspections, they should have found this. Just a lot of little problems, and I just would like to send you the information and the addresses and see if we can send BIU a, a letter telling them, like, I'm not trying to tell anybody how to do their job, but maybe because they think it's new construction, it's quick to send it through. And, and I, I, it's more than one problem, like carbon monoxide, that's a problem. Electrical, that's a problem. Heater, that's a problem. These are problems. So if you're buying a new house in the borough, we don't want people to act like we're passing it through and we're letting it go. 
So I want to get to the bottom of that. And I'll send you the addresses and the information. And that's all I have. All right. Um, first thing I'd like to do is put a motion on the floor uh, for our next meeting, which is going to take place this evening. Is that correct? So you want to make number eight? Yeah, you want I'd to add like another number eight thing. to adopt six resolutions to apply for six grant applications to the Community Development Authority. Okay. Um, I wanted to say something about today, Dr. Seuss um, Day. Um, there's also a mural that's been painted by Mark Dubois in the um, in the school, at Cider Drotty School. He's the artist that painted the mural um, on Old Route 13. Um, it was done with the gifted children at, from um, Mrs. Caruso, Dory Caruso's class. And it was, there were many books, there were pictures of things from many different books that the children read. Um, and if you get a chance to see this, it's pretty awesome. And the kids were able to paint the fish. That's what they allowed them to do at the end. They were, he, he drew everything. He did a magnificent job. This is really something to see. And the, the kids were involved the entire time from the co concept of it to the finish of it. And I, I think it's a pretty awesome thing. And he, he's such a, a great man. We should really thank him for everything he's been doing for this town. Um, also, I wanted to ask, a constituent called me, and this is going to, I need Merle to help me out with this. Merle, remember when you went for that ID for the, there's a new ID that everybody's supposed to get. Could you go up there and just say what you need to bring and where you have to go to get this ID? Why? And why? And why, I'm saying. Yeah, why? Whatever it's called, whatever you did, whatever. If you don't mind, because people want to understand what's going on with this. Yeah. Talking about the real ID. Yes, the real ID. The real ID. Uh, it was a federal requirement, I believe. It comes down through the states. Um, you go there, uh, you take all of your documentation, and it took me a while to go through because. I was born in Trenton, so I had to go to Trenton to get the actual birth certificate. What they gave my mother at birth was, was a certificate saying that the actual birth certificate was on file in Trenton. So I show up out here at Trevo's. Is that where you go, Trevo's, for well, it? Well, by the uh, Nishamity Mall. Okay. And that's the closest one. Okay. And you go in, and then you get a, you, there's a, um, a greeter there. And they have these different uh, four buttons on this machine. So if you're there for the real ID, you, they'll tell you to push the bottom button, and then it gives you a number. And all the numbers are displayed above the people that are doing the processing. So when your number's called, you go up. So my number got called. I went up and I gave them, and, and the first words out of her mouth is, oh, well, you don't have the right thing here. So I just got done sitting an hour to go get that done. I had to go back. On the way home. So I, it's birth certificate. What else? Social security number. Card. Your number. No, card. No, your card. Your card. Your card. Okay. Yeah, and, and I had to also get that because when they issued my social security <laughs> number or card, they gave it to me with only my middle name and my last okay. name. So I had to go get that done. Over. So on the way back from Trenton, I stopped at Fairless Hills and got that going. Um, and you can use your existing driver's license which is photo ID as one form of ID when you give it to them, and then they ask for a second What about passport? Can you use that as well? You it's can current. use that. Only if it's current. Okay, and well, I figured that, but, um, and what's, what's the cost of it, and why do we have to get this? Um, it, it has to do, I think, with the immigration end of things, that they're making sure that you're... When is the final day, though, that we have to have it by? October 2, 2020? Yes. Yeah. Okay. It's, if I may, it's, it's, for, it's for air travel. Yes. Okay. It's, it's, it's real ID is for air travel. It's okay. all for TSA. If you have a valid passport, you do not need it. You just need right. to use okay. your valid I need passport. To do that. Okay. The state of Pennsylvania is, does not conform with the standards. Them and 13 mm -hmm. other states don't conform with the standards of having um, so many icons inside the EID. So you, everybody has to do this if you're going to use your driver's license to get on an airplane. Okay. 
but it has to be. It's like Merle said, it's going to be quite an undertaking. By and how much did October. it cost? It's also to get into federal buildings. It was. In addition yeah. to the I want to uh, say it was like sixty some dollars by the time I was done with the real ID. Okay. And it's a one-time charge. And then the only difference is your driver's license is the same, except they put a star on there in a in a circle. That's how they determine it's a real ID. Okay. Thank you so much. There is a federal push to extend another year right now. Yeah, probably. I would hope so, but because October, there's a lot of people that don't have to. Well, yeah. Well, I'm and, one of them. I mean, I have a And you go up and you wait three hours in line. And okay. the birth certificate, you have to make sure it has a raised seal on it. Yeah, raised seal. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah. And I just wanted to say, if you get a chance to ride by Mill Run, it looks incredible. And um, they're doing all of the uh, pavements near there for handicapped accessible. Um, it's really coming along, and that's all I have. Okay, Mr. Dillon, you have anything? No, just what's on the uh, proposed agenda. agenda. Mr. Solano? No. Okay, before we go into number item three to eight, since the ring added something, I just want to introduce a good friend of ours, Craig Bowen, who's the president of Bristol Township Council, and thanks for stopping in tonight. <laughs> Okay, number three on the agenda. Mr. President, I'd like to make a motion to accept council meeting minutes for February 10th, 2020. Second by... Wait, I got I, I, I thought we were, this was our work session. Aren't we going to talk about these things before we vote on them? Well, if there's a question, a question you could talk on it. Well, there's some things on here that, you know, I thought okay, that... So why don't you go through the agenda and tell us what you want to talk about. <coughs> I thought that's what you were going to do. Go ahead with the well, that's why we're voting, and then there's a question on the motion. Right, but I'm saying we, we ahead, usually I'm have you, to do what you want, whatever you want to do. <coughs> but the motion's off the floor for now. So, what item do you want to talk about? I want to talk about all of them. Go ahead. Going through them. All right, so, Dr. Ordnance install stop sign on West Railroad Avenue. What number is that? Tony? That's number four. Okay. So that's going to that's going to be the place where they just repave over there on uh, next to Otter, right? Yep. So we had two stop signs there. Adopt ordinance restricting parking at 206. Well, let's go back to four. Oh, okay. Do you have any more questions on that? No, I'll wait for when we do the agenda meeting. This is the problem when you do both meetings at once. So I, I thought. We go over this first, talk about if there's any... Well, I said tonight that we can meet again in two weeks if you want. I'll do that. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, so let, we need to deal with some of this tonight. Okay, so we're meeting again in two weeks. I didn't say we were meeting. I said if we need to meet in two weeks. Well, that's you the, have all the time you need right now to discuss any item on this agenda. Well, that's what I'm saying. This is what we usually do. This is okay. why it's a work session. So number four you just mentioned. Okay. Now you're on five. Thank you. All right, adopt ordinance restricting parking at 206 Otter Street to 30 minutes, Monday through Friday. Now, like, I don't know if anybody else is concerned with this ordinance, but I think that it's opening up, opening up a can of worms because it's just somebody who decides they have a business, they want to have two parking spots so their customers during working hours can come into you know, into the shop, pay their bill, or whatever it is. The problem that I have with it doesn't make any sense because if you're not going to allow other businesses to have free reign, then you, it's, you're, you're, you're basically selecting or choosing who's going to be able to do it, and then we vote on it. And then you're basing it on who you're connected with, who you're friends with, who, you want to, who do you want to give the right to do that. I'm not for that, right? If it's going to be allowed for one business it has to be allowed for everybody otherwise i don't believe you should do it but well, we said we would go case to case yeah but you can't go case to case because well, it's not fair to everybody buddy right. do you believe right, it's fair it. for everybody all right, all right, listen. That he's got the floor. all right so and and like one of the things with mr gorman this is your first vote and i remember at the last meeting because i listened to the last meeting 
is that you said that you went over there and you know you did like a drive by just to check it out and you saw you know there was like six or eight open spots it wasn't no big deal but here's the thing i look at it the other way if it's no big deal that there's other spots there then it should be no big deal for harris which is a company to to get spots there well, so to to give those guys two spots when they already have ample parking in the back and they have parking on the side of their building that you know that they use to me it's not my ward but it's not but what it does is it opens it up to everybody in the borough so how is it going to be that as a council we say yes it's okay we're going to take a case by case i'm going to let harris do it but then i have businesses on beaver street that they're not going to have the same opportunity if they come in front of here and you guys could say what you want to say it's going to be case by case it's not going to be case by case because they're not going to get approved why not why not because, come on can we why stop not? playing Do games you know because any? they don't okay they well, don't because point. they don't because they don't participate in the raise the bar uh, stuff they don't put they don't <laughs> give to the committee to secure why you guys that's the truth all right Tony. michael gorman yes. that's not the michael, truth. you don't need to answer no. him. he's a he's a counselor not going back and forth oh, you, you address your questions to me well then that's everybody then so when they start that's commenting him. shut them down uh, i will you have i yet. just called betty and i he did. okay thank you all right so that's that's the problem that I have. It's not going to be fair to everybody. I see. Because you. now, in a nutshell, again, these are parking issues. Are these things, Lou? You're you're in charge. You're the chairperson of the parking committee. When this comes in front of you, does this make sense to you? Who's part of your parking committee that you guys are discussing this? This is uh, not their space. This isn't restricted to Harris Fields. Uh -uh. This is no different than the spaces that we actually we have some that it's bank parking only. Mm -hmm. yeah, but that, and that's been up. All right, guys, yeah, I'm, not, I'm not going to keep going it. back and forth. This, isn't Mr. this Devine, what the work session is for? Make your Mr. statement President. and we'll move on. It's, this is the work session. Okay, we and we're giving you time now, to every discuss time it. Time we're talking, we're now. You don't colleagues. talk across the floor. Why can't we? Because I'm running the meeting and I'm telling you, address your concerns to me. Well, there is the concerns not to, all right, can you ask Mr., does that make any sense? Can you ask Mr. Quattrochi, who's part of the parking committee, Mr. DiGiuseppe? No need for it. Well, then how am I going to have this You made a statement about Beaver Street. If there's somebody on Beaver to, Street asking, that wants a listen, parking spot, you're, you're missing the tell point. them to come in. No, you're missing the point. The point is you're opening up a can of worms. Okay, I take that. Okay. In the consideration. Right, you're not when taking I into vote, consideration because when I vote, I'll take that into consideration. All right. Well, anyway, this is this is the problem. It, if you're having a work session, aren't you supposed to be able to talk to your colleagues about it? No, we're not. Mr. Gatroch, you want to answer him? But I'm not getting into a dialogue for half hour. This, like I said, I'll just mention it again. It's not for Harris's. It's not restricted for Harris's. This is not the first time we've done it for businesses in town. And we've done we've done something in your ward, which I'm sure you're worried that Mr. DiGiuseppe's friends with Harris is, so that's why you don't like this. No, but 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 that's on not why, it. That, that, that's it. That's it. No, but, it's not. Okay, it's not. But and on Garden Street, we created a a, a special parking zone there mm -hmm. for the people on Garden Street in your ward. Yeah, to help the people. Oh, well, how about I'm a person from Bristol that drives to the to the train station? Okay. Why can't I park on Garden Street? I can't park on Garden Street. Okay. I, I should park here's, in Here's the difference, Lou. What we did on Garden Street is to help the residents. This is not to help the residents. This is to hurt the residents and help a business. This okay. is to help a guy who's, who wrote it. Who's who, who, who is All right, guys, I'm not getting into this. Because it doesn't make sense. Time. It's why. All right, what else you got, Tony? Ridiculous. Time? All right, so let's add to it. So now, since it's not a zoning issue, it's not a parking, so basically, if anybody comes to us, why can't an older lady or an older gentleman who struggles to get in their house, why can't we do it for them? They get done work at three. Why can't we have no parking there for that older person, that elderly person, from three to six so they could park in front of our house? What's going to stop us from saying no to them? Not on the agenda. But what I'm saying, what's going to stop as a whole? I'm talking for real. They get handicapped. All right. The handicap park has nothing. They're elderly. It's not, it's not a handicap. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you wanted to make that throughout the entire Lorraine. No. Lorraine. 
what I'm what I'm saying is you're opening up a can of okay, worms. Okay, we're taking. So your... you so you can do something nice for. Listen, and I'm I understand what it is, and I'm not saying it in a negative way. It's part of politics, part of what it is. But this is somebody that that you're friends with that has done some good things in a borough. I'm not saying any of those things are not true. All I'm saying is it's going to cause a problem down the road okay. when other people – and if not, I'm going to tell everybody, please come to the meeting and ask for a parking spot. I ask agree. for a parking spot. I agree. Okay. And the last meeting you weren't here, we said if anybody on that it. street wanted to come here to voice our opinion, please come to this meeting. Do you see anybody? Ralph, now, I don't mean to – and I know you, you're going to get on – do you think anybody, you've been here a long time, do you think anybody is going to go to that podium and say anything that's going to be negative for fear of what would happen if they come and complain about something? Yeah, okay. It's, it's the reality. You could say it isn't, but that's the reality. All right, so, I mean, I just wanted to make that clear. I'm, I'm not okay with that. And now we have another parking issue on... Number, uh, we'll go to number six over in our, all right, Bristol Borough Curb Ramp Program. All right, so I talked to, to a couple of the local, you know, concrete guys. And, you know, you get a mix. That sounds like a fair price, they, you know. So I'm okay with that. It's not a problem. Is there a way, Mr. Dillon, that we can alert these local contractors when we do these types of things? Is there a way that we could, you know, make sure that all these guys are... You have a list of people that you want notified... Give it to Mr. Okay. Dillon, and he'll make sure the next time the bids go out there notified. Okay. Right. And then authorize advertising orders to allow parking on both sides of Pond Street. All right. So to me, both sides of Pond Street down there, that's something that makes sense. It's not, you know, it, it, it's not a residential area. It's there. So, I mean, to me, that's something that makes sense. But again, I don't know why there, there's no in-between party. Like, this doesn't go to the parking committee with Mr. Quattrochi. It just goes right in front of us before it goes there. Yeah. All right. There. And then there's a, a motion I would like to add to the agenda, is that I would like to make a motion introducing term limits to make sure that we don't have the same people representing us for so long. And specifically what I would like to look like would be something, the term limits would be for three consecutive terms and a total of four years for any one person to hold the chair or vice chair position. So that way, you know, people could be on it, but it would, it would spread and there wouldn't be so much, you know, it, it wouldn't just be one person that's making all of you know the decisions of what's going on in the town. I think that I would like to add that to the agenda. Oh, just for the chair and vice chair, or for just for 12 years? No, no, three consecutive terms for everybody. So you can't run anymore after 12 no. years? No, no, you can. It's just not consecutive. So you would have to step out and then come back. And then come back. All right. What is it that crazy, Mayor? Is that that crazy? They actually been here 90 years. Not at all. Have you, you know, do you, do you think we need fresh the people the in there? Would have, fresh ideas? I think the state would have something to say about it. Right, oh, they would? Right. Term what limits? What else, yeah. Tony? Um, no, that's it. Okay. You all done? Yeah, I just went over, I did your job. I went over Number the agenda. Number four on the agenda. Mr. President, we need... Sorry, we have I'm sorry. I, I make a motion to accept the council meeting minutes from February 10, 2020. Second by Ms. Rodriguez. Any questions? Comments? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those? Number four. Mr. President, I'd like to make, make a motion to adopt an ordinance to install a stop sign on West Railroad Avenue at Old Route 13 and a stop sign on West Railroad Avenue on Otter Street. I have a second. Second by Mr. Mm -hmm. Mrs. Collin. Any questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Number five. Uh, Mr. President, I'd like to make a motion to adopt the ordinance restricting parking at 206 Otter Street to 30 minutes, Monday through Friday, 
between the hours of 8 a.m. and 5 p.m. Second by Mr. Gorman. Questions or comments? Mr. Devine. Yes, comments is just, I, I don't think this is a good idea, and we are opening ourselves up for a bunch of headaches. People are going to be asking for parking spots. Just my opinion. This is where I read this. Yeah, I'd like to make a comment. I just want everybody to realize that it's a 30 minutes from between the hours of 8 and 5. 8 okay. and 5. Any other questions or comments? <coughs> All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Me. You got that, Mara? Uh, Mr. President, I'd like to make a motion to award the contract for the 2019 Bristol Borough CDBG curb ramp program to GMB Construction Incorporated for the base bid alternate number one and alternate number two in the amount of 92000 and forty dollars contingent upon a 30-day review period for g and v construction incorporated pursuant to the requirements of the responsible contractors ordinance i have a second second by miss rodriguez questions or comments all those in favor uh, uh, opposed uh, number seven Mr. President, I'd like to make a motion to authorize the advertising ordinance to allow parking on both sides of Pond Street between Mill Street and the municipal parking lot. Two hours. To be two. for also noted to be a two hour parking limit. Do I have a second? Second by Ms. Rodriguez. Questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Number eight. Mr. President, I'd like to adopt six resolutions to apply for six grant applications to the Community Development Authority, which follows. Number one, ADA curb ramp upgrades $204,400. 28 curb ramps along Walnut, Mulberry, and Wood Street. Uh, spur, number two, spur line path resurfacing 90000 Paving of the spur line path from Darns to Monroe. If there were other locations that the borough was concerned about, we can modify this application. Sidewalk improvements, $100,000. Construction of sidewalks to close gaps on Green Street, Beaver Street, Farragut Avenue, and Pine Grove Street. Mulberry Street resurfacing, $95,000. Paving of Mulberry Street. This road was not paved in 2009, but we can select a different road if we would like. Mill and Radcliffe pedestrian improvements, 265,000 sidewalk bump outs and pedestrian improvements at the intersection of Mill and Radcliffe streets. Uh, Elm Street redevelopment phase, 250,000 demolition of 11 borough owned properties on Elm as a part of Chestnut Elm redevelopment, Elm Street redevelopment. So I got a second by Mr. Catrocci. Questions or comments? Mr. Devine. Yeah, I just have one question. We talked about in there, uh, Mrs. Cullen said that we would be able to modify if it was, you know, a, a different street or, or a different area that could get hit. So basically I'm re I'm, what I'm hearing is that we need to put in for, we need to put in for this now. But after, if it gets approved, we could change it to a more a situation that could be more needy. I'm not much sure we could move the money to pave another street. Okay. No. Can't. I don't think you All right. So I should take that out of there. Uh, if you want, the applications are due on March 18th, so it'll be up for discussion now. At this point, if it's going to be changed. Okay, so the street is in there right now. It's Mulberry Street. The road was not paved in 2009. All right. Do you have anybody have it, something they want to try to change it to? Well, I, I know the alleys that we have behind Buckley that runs from Corson to Pass Pine is terrible. That's Plum Street. Plum it's Street. Terrible. Yeah. So I don't think we're going to do an alley if we could do a street. So. The street. Well, it's, it's the street. Plum Street? Yes. Okay. All right. Well, again, this is all the grants that I'm trying to get again for the borough, so that's what we came up with. Any other questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Do we decide that we're not going to change any of them to Plum Street? No. 
Okay. Well then, I want to agree. I'm going to take this out. Uh, put, but we can select to diff different. No, you can't select a different. Shirt. I'm saying I'm we're eliminating that section of it. Of the motion. Of the motion, we're okay, eliminating. So but we can select a different so one. So we're voting on this motion. There's a okay. motion and a second. Right, but here's the problem. Now we have to do each one individually because I'm I want to vote for. Okay. Five of them, but not all of them. Plum Street's not on there, Tony. What is it? Plum Street is not on that motion. Exactly. That's so why. That would have to be a whole new motion. So just say but Mulberry. Yeah, but what I'm, I'm saying, saying is, you're going to say Mulberry. I'm not okay with that. I want Plum that. Street. Can you just say that? Just do it individually. I don't care how you want to go. Why don't you just all five? Okay, you vote on it. Yes, the other five. You up? You vote no on this street. Yes. That's all. That's all. Is okay. that good enough? Yeah, that's great. Up to you. You're the one who's all right. Right. So all those order. in favor on that? Aye. Opposed? Aye. Okay. Motion carries. So Tony, you voted against the one thing. Yes. All right. Can I get a motion to adjourn? Wait, yeah. I have okay. I have another one. Go ahead. All right, Mr. President, I would like to make a motion. I'm sorry. Introducing term limits. The term limits would be for three consecutive terms, for all elected officials, and specifically a total of four years for any one person to hold the chair or vice chair position. Do I have a second? And can I get a roll call vote? Roll call vote. Any questions or comments? Do we know that if, if this even meets borough, borough code? No. I don't think borough code addresses. We have a state you, borough code. You cannot, uh, you cannot introduce term limits. Right. That's, that's, a, that's a borough code. Matter. It's already a code. That's not our code. That's a state borough code. Okay. So there's a motion on the floor. There's a second by Mr. Gerard. Let's vote. Mr. Roll call. Mr. Gerard. Yes. Mr. Devon. Yes. Mr. Pez is absent. Ms. Cullen. No. Ms. Rodriguez. No, you can't. Mr. Gorman. No. No. Mr. D. Uh, applies to me. So. Doesn't apply to you. Call down. Second, but hold. Louis, you got something? What? No, second. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> no. 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 No.